Hi, Isabel. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about your training? Yeah, so I trained for three years in acting at Mount View, which is a drama school in London. And Judy Dench is the patron of it. Um, she's always the name people know and recognise. Um, but yeah, so it was three years, a um, variety of different classes in acting, um, movement, voice studies as well, um, bits of dance as well, uh, stage combat. So quite thorough training. Yeah. And did you, um, when you graduated, how does it work in acting? Do you have to audition for agents? Um, what's the next step after graduating? Yeah, so um, in our third year, our final year, basically the first year is a training year. Um, the second year is kind of where you start doing internal performances. And then the third year is your graduation year where you do public performances. And so you can invite agents and also the drama school invites agents to your shows. And also you have a showcase, which um, so our one was in the Criterion Theatre um, by Piccadilly Circus. So quite a Ooh. You know, central yeah location which is great um and yeah so agents are invited to that you can also write to them and invite them and yeah if you're lucky you get signed from drama school I was lucky to get an agent um at the end of it but you can also you know after that you can still get work without having an agent um but I think I've found from experience that the opportunities you can get with an agent are um you can get bigger jobs higher caliber jobs so I think you're unlikely to book any like really major TV or film jobs without an agent. It, not to say it doesn't happen, but it's mm. a lot harder, I think, because it's an industry that obviously relies on connections and, and networking. So you want to make your network as, as big and strong as possible, really. So having help of an agent who has the connections already is very helpful. Would you say, speaking of network, would you say your network out of college, the other actors, are they still your network today? Or did you, when you left college, did you have to build a completely new um, base of people that you needed to be in touch with your prof in your professional life? Yeah, so I'm still in touch with quite a few people from drama school. Um, I mean, it's really easy these days as well. I particularly like Instagram for kind of staying in touch because you can see what people are up to really quickly. Like, on people. The <laughs> Sorry? You can stalk people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's handy for kind of like checking in and seeing what people are doing and also sharing what you're working on. Um, but the, I think the one thing about networking, which I think I had some misconceptions about at the beginning is it's not, it's helpful to know other actors, of course, particularly like when you're wanting to create your own work and, you know, having people to rehearse with, or if you've got self tapes, helping each other out with that is great. But arguably probably more important is to network with well for example like I'm primarily focused on like screen work I, I love theatre as well but for example for screen work it's much more important to network with filmmakers because they're the ones that you are going to be giving you the work essentially unless you create your own work so I think it's really important to you kind of get get to know as many kind of directors or producers um, casting directors as possible really to kind of increase chances of getting seen and getting work. Bilingual because your mom is German um, mm. and you just told me you just did your first German uh, work. Yeah so it's an adaptation of Charlotte Link's best-selling crime novel The Search or it's Die Suche yeah. in Germany and um, yeah it's going to be on our dear um, which is quite exciting um, and yeah, it was shot up in Leeds, but it was a German product, German speaking production. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know how much I can reveal, but I guess like if you've read the book, then you know the basic story. And um, I play a police officer in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was really exciting. It was shot up in Leeds, um, stayed like in a really nice hotel as well while we were filming up there. And I had a really lovely co-star as well, Sam, Sam Sharma, shout out to him. Um, and yeah, the whole team, like the production crew were really lovely. And it was weird, like filming during the pandemic, obviously. Um, so I had so many COVID tests. Like I think on one of the weeks that I was filming there, I had like four tests within the week just because it's like, wow. yeah, it's pretty strict. And you know, like masks on constantly apart from for the takes. Um, but even for rehearsals, we had masks on. Uh, obviously not for makeup. You can't really do makeup with a mask on. Um, 
but yeah it was really it was really exciting to kind of do that and it'll be nice for like the German side of my family to be able to watch it as well um yeah it's exciting I think it's quite amazing that you managed to work in Germany anyway because I'm German and but I'm coming from Bavaria so we have a, a dialect that we speak and everybody hears straight away that um, no matter how hard I try they're gonna hear straight away that I'm you know from Bavaria so they're pretty snobby with accents so just the fact that really? you actually managed to work in Germany means that your German must be pretty much spot on probably better than mine <laughs> <laughs> Well, my family are from the northern part, so I think that's probably where that, you know, that, I don't have that same bias against me. But I think that's pretty rough. I mean, yeah, I guess I think the thing with working in this country, if you if you are a German speaker and it's obviously like an English person casting, they're not going to be like as aware of that. But I think if it's maybe if it's a German person casting, like they might be more aware of that. I think that, well, I don't know, I, I just think if you're in a country, like you see it with a lot of foreign productions and I see it myself in like world war films or things like that, where they have like German speaking actors and I can tell straight away it's an English person, but to English people, they're like, oh yeah, he's German. But like, to me, I'm like, you are not speaking good German. Pronunciation is not right, but you yeah, only really- We always know shout at each other as if in Germany, yeah. everybody shouts <laughs> constantly. <laughs> <laughs> But you only notice that really if you're a native speaker. But um, yeah, I think like people are a bit like deaf to accents unless they're mm. from like the country. <laughs> did you always have this interest or passion for screen acting or did that develop in college? Um, yeah, I mean, I've always, I think f from when I was really young, when I first got interested um, in wanting to pursue acting, um, I've always been drawn to that and I think my style of acting as well I, I definitely favor a very naturalistic um realistic performance so it's it's well suited to screen I love theatre though and obviously like when you're growing I say obviously maybe it's not obvious but um when you're growing up there's a lot in terms of theatre opportunities and like musicals at school and clubs and things so it's it's really good to kind of get get a groundwork and, and get acting I think when certainly when I was growing up and a kid there were fewer like specific screen like I don't know like there, there was stagecoach which I did when I was younger which was like acting singing dancing classes there wasn't really like a stagecoach for film like specifically if, if that makes sense like not that I knew of in my area so it was in terms of getting some training and experience that was like a good route in um, but I actually did a foundation year in musical theatre before I did acting as a three year course. Um, but it was more so, it was more of a, um, I don't know if calculator is the right word, but I, I thought it would be smarter to get training in a variety of skills rather than just doing a foundation in acting, because then it's, I, I, I found it so helpful to have different skills that you can bring to acting because there's always jobs coming up where they want a very specific skill or you know person who has experience in something so I think you kind of have to be a bit of a jack of all trades it's quite tricky you don't have to but it increases your chances of getting work and obviously if you're an actor you want to work and yeah. um, that's kind of the hardest part of I think being a freelance performer is getting those opportunities to show what you can do. One thing I was speaking to the other um, guests uh, on this podcast before is sometimes people especially when they come from like a less supportive environment they have issues of declaring their artistry of saying i'm an artist you know a lot of people are like yeah yeah i'm a musician but i'm like trying to worm your way around like i've I've heard of my, my friend actually told me he's been already working but he's never seen himself as an artist because he was a drummer and the drummer is not really the center of the um attention so he was just like oh i just wanted to be the the, the best sideman possible and um, uh, artists was the other people, you know, the singers and stuff like that. But for me, it's really important, for example, to define myself as an artist because that kind of gives me the freedom to express myself uh, rather than just fulfilling a job of a dancer. How is that for you? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I can kind of understand. It's an interesting what, you, what your friend said. Like, I, can, I can understand feeling like that I think I would hmm, 
I think, yeah, it's fair to say artist. I think I would primarily just describe myself as an actor. But then after that, I think probably creative. Um, because I, I've always, like, from a young age, I drew a lot. I did a lot of art. Um, particularly over the past year, couple of years, um, I've been getting more into music. Um, I've been learning guitar and writing songs as well. So, and obviously, like, doing acting, singing and dancing. It, it's like a whole range of different um creative fields um yeah it's interesting i guess people have different connotations or associations with the word artist it's very easy to think of just like painter or yeah i just thinking very traditionally of like drawing um but yeah it's fair to say artist i think i think for some reason i, I associate that more with people who primarily do art or do music but yeah I, a, acting is an art um I don't know whether I just have like certain pretentious like I don't know <laughs> connotations with with the calling myself an artist. Um, That's why it's yeah. so interested, interesting to get into it. Yeah, because not everybody declares themselves as an artist. Some some people see it as a job, or some people they've never even thought about that question before. So that's why I'm like really interested to get into it yeah yeah i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't like be completely averse if someone else described me as it but i think if i if it, you were to say like what are you what what do you do i would say i'm an actor mm -hmm. and then i i am creative like as a person i don't know why i wouldn't necessarily probably for some of the reasons i mentioned before but yeah i wouldn't necessarily first off like call myself an artist yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> it's a deep question. It's deeper yeah. than you would think. Do you ever have the ambition to create your own work as well? I guess with screen acting, maybe it's a little bit more difficult because I think people that do live shows do their own thing all the time because it's accessible. But screen is, is often more expensive than just putting on a little sideshow in like a fringe theater, for example. Mm -hmm. But is it... Do you want, ever want to pursue something like that? Or yes, have... so definitely. Yes, it's it's definitely, particularly over the past year, it's come to like my mind that it's something that I want to pursue further. Like I've been starting to write music and things, um, but I really want to write something for screen as well, probably something TV wise, something that kind of goes through, has that kind of episodic journey through kind of an arc and story um but yeah I think I think there's definitely something very satisfying like I love creating things like I really, <laughs> this is so <laughs> this is so random but um for a part that I'm filming next week the my character does embroidery so I've been letting to embroider and I found that I really enjoy it I just did not think I would be the person to enjoy sitting down and just just <laughs> sewing really but I I found a lot of enjoyment in it and I think just generally, like I really enjoy creating things and um, just something that I've made from scratch that's come, you know, come from my hands or, you know, my brain. Um, and yeah, like I definitely, I definitely want to, to spend more time doing that. I, I thought that at the start of this year, I would kind of get a sort of rough first draft complete, but I haven't quite got there yet. Like I've got kind of scenes and ideas generally like I've written down but I haven't like shaped it yet into like that first draft which I need to do really um it's just tricky when you're a freelancer because you're, you're juggling so many plates at once um and it's finding the time to kind of allocate to to things but yeah like you said like tv or film like screen work it involves so many people it's like a, a much bigger production than for example putting on a, like a fringe theatre piece so um yeah you can yeah. do it alone yeah, yeah, definitely. I've, okay. I've got, a, yeah, no, exactly. Like my, I, my friend's a writer and he's put on stuff before. Like I've gone up to the, um, the Edinburgh Fringe with him in a play. Um, and yeah, it, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant experience. Um, yeah, it's just getting, getting good script training, getting some good people together. But, um, but yeah, with screen stuff, it's, it's a bit harder. Although people have been doing it. People have been made, made films over Zoom um, over the lockdown. So it's possible. It's got to, get an idea and then just do it, make it happen. It's true. And there's even whole film festivals for films shot on iPhone and stuff like that. So I think it, yeah. the world opens up because iPhone films on 4K anyway. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Stand, like, you know, 30 frames per second. It's pretty, you can do anything you want with that footage, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. It can be a great tool for social action. How do you hope to impact the world with what you do? It's a great question. Um, I mean, it's hard to kind of necessarily, because as an actor, you're like part of like the puzzle or the story, but you're a part in it. And I think the kind of the story as a whole and like the people who create that story have a greater role in that by virtue of the story that they're telling. But um, I, I'd love to be involved in work that kind of make, makes people think about either their actions or like what they've seen and like reflect on that and how how that impacts their life and how they might move forward having seen that. Because I've seen so many like beautiful, amazing films that have made me reflect on things differently and think, oh, like, yeah, that that's like a really good, like way to go that's a good lesson and yeah I'd love to be in work that kind of inspires that kind of positive change really in someone's mindset or someone's actions um but yeah I'd also like to hopefully if I can get into some more writing stuff like write something that engages people that entertains them but also makes them think and reflect um yeah I think that's the most fulfilling really but then again, I also love comedy and like just stuff for laughs is great as well. I think making someone laugh is just, yeah, an amazing feeling. Um, so I, I love both. I love ent- the entertainment side of it, but I also love, you know, the, the, the deeper side of it, you know, that makes people think, think and reflect on themselves, their situation, their lives, their characters. Um, before you mentioned that you have to kind of juggle a lot of things as an actor because you have to chase up your auditions you have to kind of to a certain extent be your accountant you have Mm -hmm. to drive back and forth to locations um you have to promote yourself and kind of um figure out what who you want to be like what brand what's your brand and stuff like that um how do you juggle all of those sides do you have a certain system or do you just let it come at you or do you outsource a lot of that work yeah it's a it's a tricky feel because it, it really depends like what what kind of I guess like career you want and what kind of work you want because for me like I want to as much as possible be a working actor who makes most of their income from their acting work and that's something very difficult to do so then you find yourself I, like I want to do primarily narrative work um like dramas and things um but there's so many different avenues of acting that I didn't even realize existed until like during and after drama school and um, for example like corporate acting work um and medical role play work which I actually love um oh yeah it's, yeah it's like for training doctors so like for their oh, exams or um, <laughs> yeah so basically I, I might play like a patient or also like a, a nurse or a trainee doctor in a in a situation and um, I'm giving given like a brief um, and a breakdown of like the situation, like what the condition is or what the symptoms are, and um, then have to enter into a dialogue with the you know the trainee doctor, the candidate, and um, yeah, like I've learned a lot about a, a range of medical conditions from doing it. Um, but also as an act from an acting point of view, it's really good practice for because you have to ensure consistency so that it's fair for every candidate. So you have to give basically the same performance each time. And so it's really helpful for training that muscle of like making like a believable situation real, um, but also reproducing that consistently. So it's really helpful, like both ways, like from a like learning, like intellectual side, but then also from the, the, I guess like the creative practice side of like being able to replicate results and emotions particularly for like the psychology exams because there's some like really heavy serious like conditions and situations like people that have gone through in, like really intense trauma and having like severe depression or overdoses and like yeah to go to that place repeatedly like it's quite an intense day but it's, it's good it's good preparation because yeah like it, for for 
I guess for screen work, you might not get like as as many takes, but for example, for theatre, like you are doing that run and you are doing that performance like every day or at night um, for like a sustained period of time. So you have to be able to get to that place like every single time. Um, Did it ever happen yeah. to you that you kind of weren't able to let go at the end of a day like that? Let's say you pr played a depressed person the whole day, like five times in a row. Did you ever go home and were like, damn, I feel really down now? Or did, were you able to just step out of the day of work and be yourself again? Yeah, I mean, some days it's it's harder and it's easier. Um, but yeah, like you do, you do feel quite like drained like tired particularly if you've been crying a lot it's just your, your body doesn't really like know the difference between like whether it's you are actually upset and I don't know it's like a really it's a really weird like place or like focused mindset to describe because like the situation feels real to me when I'm in it like I feel like genuinely upset at like whatever you know the, the situation is so I am upset so it, my body and like me like I will feel like I've just cried because I have just cried um but yeah I think having like things to look forward to at the end um of of that like day if I know that it's going to be quite an intense day is like yeah it's important like know that I'm watching a good film after all I don't know like getting some sushi or something like something or ice cream like something to look forward to um and that's also important for auditions I found having something to look forward to after so that irrespective of how the audition goes or whether you do or don't get it it's still a good day like you know you can push that out of your mind because you've got this to look forward to I think it just helps a lot with yeah like your psychology and your mindset and keeping you like focused and not letting it get too much to you and your self-esteem Because then, yeah, it's just too hard to deal with. It actually used to happen to me when I um, started auditioning, like early 20s. Every time I got cut in the first round, I um, went shopping to make myself feel better. And then I ended up spending so much money because you go to a lot of auditions sometimes and you get cut a lot. And I'm like, okay, I need to calm down. I have like zero pounds in my savings just because I go shopping after every audition that I got cut in the first round. So that was something I had to like really get under control when I was younger. It's hard as a dancer though. Like, yeah, like mad respect to you and like people that do it because it's like, yeah, I think it's a lot. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a lot more... It's, it's brutal anyway like there's so much rejection in this industry but I think particularly like when you're a dancer and you have like that that like 16 bars or whatever of like choreography to perform and then you're cut and you don't get to show like fully what you do like just not having that opportunity like it's just so frustrating but it's it, I know I understand like from a casting point of view because I've got so many people to see but yeah it's, and I think it's, casting directors know what they want I yeah think a lot of times they could already send you out before you did those 16 bars yeah yeah but it happened to me once I went um for an audition and the choreographer like we all have, were standing in the line and she just went like tap people on the shoulder thank you thank you thank you thank you she cut like the group was 50 she sent 30 people home before we even had done a single step before we even had spaced out in the studio we were literally just walking okay stand in the line and she sent 30 people home which is brutal because then I was thinking, part of me was thinking, why do you do an open audition if your yeah. criteria is so specific? But I think legally they have to do open auditions. Uh, so, but yeah, that was an experience. That only happened once, but that was pretty hardcore to experience. But luckily I managed to stay for like another round. Otherwise it would have been a shopping trip and a half again. <laughs> 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 I don't do it anymore now. I'm like, I'm cool with it. Because actors do self tape even without pandemic hmm. so um obviously all of us had to figure out how to point the phone at ourselves and film something but you already um had that at your hands D does do you feel like it kind of made it a little bit easier to transition to rehearsals on zoom all the zoom meetings in the world or or not <laughs> Yeah, so, and I would say as well, like, I my skills definitely got better during the lockdown, because I had been self-taping before, like you, you said, but um, 
I think the, the volume of self tapes has obviously increased because um, there's not any really any in person auditions, particularly first round auditions. Um, so I think, yeah, and I'm someone who actually enjoys doing self tapes and yeah. auditions. Um, you know, irrespective of, of outcome, it's still I still enjoy doing it. So. Um, yeah, I know that there's some people that are more like tech averse that I know that are like, oh, like it's all self tapes now. But I think it's just a practice thing, like anything, like getting your setup and just you, you learn like the more you do it, like what certain like where to position the camera for for you from you um, in terms of distance and also like lighting um, and yeah, just certain things that work better or don't work better in terms of like eye line and like spacing. Um, yeah it, it's just you just have to if that's if that's what's being used and you want to work in that field you just have to get better at it you just have to find a way to learn the skills you know do do a course do classes um and you know ask people for recommendations and things um because if you, you're not going to do it someone else will mm -hmm. um you just don't have that luxury of being like you know oh well they can see me in person like it's not happening at the moment so if this is the only way that you can get a part you have to get good at yeah. doing that to get the parts um another question has always interested me about acting i've been in like two or three movie but just as a dancer um but i noticed that you don't really shoot a movie in order you might mm. shoot everything that's outside and then you on one day and then you shoot everything that's in the classroom the next day and then everything that's in the swimming pool the next day um is it hard for you to keep track or do you even try to keep track of where you are in the script or do you just see each day or each scene as like a little mini story in itself yeah it's a combination of, of both really because i think there's certain depending on the, the story obviously but that i think for particularly for some of the things that I've worked on recently, there's certain points in the story where something might, might have more impact that the character says, or you have to know that they're referring to something else or where, like where it's building to. Um, I find like personally, um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously, because having come from a theatre background as well, like it's preferable to shoot in sequence, but I understand why that's not always possible in terms of locations and things on um, a film job. Um, but yeah, like I, I think any scene that's like emotional in any way, or like, you know, like towards a climax, personally, I would rather shoot near the end of the shoot, because I find once you've, you've built up that bond and that rapport with people, it's a lot easier to, to kind of invest that far like into a story and I think I just think those scenes feel more satisfying to play then but equally like you said sometimes it's you don't you don't have that opportunity and so you, you do focus on each each scene is like you say a mini journey like you're at a starting point and you have an end point and it, it's how you get there and as long as you know like what what's happened before and you know like why you're coming into that scene and what you're trying to achieve um yeah it's it's not because you never perform the whole film anyway in in one go um like you even if you were filming it in order you would stop and start so it, it is just about being like having gone through the scripts multiple times and being really clear on like where you are at that point um but yeah you have to be because to me like the best performances are the ones that feel like um just like really spont spontaneous and like natural and they're reacting to things as that as they're happening it's not like pre-planned so i think in that way it, it's good to just like focus on that scene because like moment to moment I, i might have ideas of what's going to happen but if something happens now like i would react to that and that's exactly like where you are in that scene it's you don't know what's happening next like obviously we know as actors because we've read the script and we know our lines but ideally like your character hasn't experienced that before so you need to be ready to just yeah just jump in like and react to what happens really is it something that comes natural to you or is it something that came with experience that you're able to make it appear natural while you already done it maybe 70 times in a row and read the script 
Yeah, um, to an extent, yes, it comes natural, but you have to practice and you, you just learn things that are better in terms of like positioning and things for camera because yeah there's there's some things that you there's some ways that you might react but then if the camera can't capture that it's kind of a bit a bit redundant um i just mean that in terms of like things like eye line and things like if you wouldn't actually look down all the time you you can't do that in a scene because it's not engaging to watch um so like I, I've had that before where like I've kind of had to like force my eyeliner a bit to lift from what I would normally do just because it doesn't translate as well on camera. Um, but it is practice like the more you practice, the more you explore, the more like new kind of connections to things appear and you find easier ways or, or more helpful ways of, of getting in and doing things. Um, and yeah, like, I just love doing it like it's, it's fun. So to me that time like as well spent like learning because yeah you're just always surprised by what you find and like yeah just every year I'm still learning new things and I look back year on year progress I think it's more helpful to look at bigger chunks of time because I think if you look like day to day week to week you can be sometimes like frustrate yourself that oh you're like I'm just not getting where I want to be but if you look back over like yearly progress like I'm definitely building on things year on year and learning new things um, so that's really exciting to see. I think just, it, yeah, you just got to be careful not to get too blinkered, I think. And like, yeah, just tunnel in because then it, it can get frustrating and you can frustrate yourself and it's just, just not helpful to yourself. It, it's hard because I think a lot of people have a tendency to do it. And I, like I'm including myself there, but I have a tendency to, if I look at things over a short period of time, I'm like, oh, just not getting like, like I want to be here and I'm here. But like, if you look over the year, I'm like, no, it's definitely, it's definitely, I'm progressing. It's just perhaps not as quickly as I would like. Last thing, um, is there one thing that let's say 10 years ago from, uh, from now, you would have wished to know that you know now? Um, I think have more confidence in what you're doing. I think don't be, there's a fine line, I think, between being like assertive and cocky, but, um, or more confident and cocky, but I think, yeah, just like trusting in yourself more but it is tricky when you've got like I don't know peers or like teachers who who you think have the answers and you know they're giving you you know criticism or um yeah advice that you don't feel like quite sits right and but you think well they're the teacher so they they should know but everyone's figuring stuff out um And yeah, I think just be like, as if you're happy with what you've done, like there's not, if you've done it to the best of your ability, like there's nothing more you can do. And if you're right for a part, you're right for it. If someone has a different idea of what that part is or that person is, then there's nothing you can do about that. So yeah, just keep, keep going. It's just keep going and not, not let it like get to you too much, which is so hard to do sometimes, but yeah, it's, It is about that and it, yeah it's it's just I think having lot having things going on like having projects mm. to, to focus on you don't you don't get as invested then if one falls through because you've got other things going on I think if you're putting all your eggs in one basket I think that's when it's easier to fall short because you, yeah that, that's the only chance you've got to do what you love whereas if you have lots of opportunities it's like ah oh, well I didn't get that one but I've got this one to focus on yeah Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Nice talking to you.